We want to know what kind of work I've done, the products I've built that help companies work more efficiently. Yeah. You can visit my website, uh, kevinbazira.com. So how have people been making money with WordPress? Uh, we've been seeing a uh, gentleman here talking to us about blogging. Uh, when you create your blog, put very good content on it, advertise on it, the advertisers will pay you money. If uh, you're a developer, a business needs a website, you develop uh, the website for the business, the business pays you. If you are a theme developer, you develop themes uh, for WordPress websites, other developers buy them, you get money. If you are a plugin developer, you develop plugins, other software developers buy them, you get money. Then um, if you, you'd like to work for a WordPress firm, there are several firms I've had. I had Kanzu Code. It's also automatic, among others. Uh, they develop uh, WordPress solutions. So if you work for us, you also earn money that way uh, with WordPress. But all these ways of earning money with WordPress have an intersection. They have something they all go through, and it's the editor. Whether you are a theme developer, a plugin developer, or just a general WordPress user, you will end up using the editor. Uh, there is an editor we've all, we've all been using uh, since 2004, when WordPress was uh, released. There is uh, an editor we've been using. Anybody knows what that editor is called? Yes, please? Yeah, very good. The classic editor. Uh, the classic editor looks something like this. Um, this is what we've been using in WordPress. And basically, the vision of WordPress at the beginning was to be a blogging platform. Okay? Uh, when Matt was forking it from BB Press, he was developing a blogging uh, platform. But over time, uh, it has grown, it has diversified to hold bigger websites. It can now do e-commerce, it can now do banking solutions, and many other solutions. What that meant is, originally, when you wanted to type a blog, you just type it the way you use uh, your Microsoft Office, the way you type in Word. You type, italicize, bold, using the buttons up here. This is, uh, this is Tiny MC. Tiny MC looks like this in the classic editor. So you type in here, bold, italicize, underline, the same way you do it in Word. But uh, with bigger websites like e commerce sites that need uh, extra functionality like sliders and that kind of thing, you'd have to use short quotes. You'd have to use short quotes to embed sliders. You've, you've, you've visited websites that have images that move, right? So in order to add that into your website that uses DynamCE, you'd have to use something called uh, a short code. And many a times, uh, for the non-developers, or even sometimes the developers, when you use short codes and miss, say, a character in that short code, the alignment of your website will be distorted. So since last year, 2017, WordPress has, built, uh, has been building a new uh, modern blog, uh, a new modern editor. The new editor is called Gutenberg. Um, there was a gentleman who discussed it yesterday, and I'm just going to add on top of that. Um, moving forward, we are going to be built, we are going to be working with the Gutenberg editor. Basically, it's blog based. In the classic editor, where we are adding um, short quotes, Okay, in case you wanted to add a slider, you'd have to get a short port, put it into your uh, classic editor. This time, you won't need a short port, you just have to use blocks. This is uh, the, the block picker, and each of these is a block. Uh, if you want to add, say, a paragraph into your web page, you'd have to choose the paragraph block. If you wanted to add the emojis, you would have to choose the emojis block, the slider, and so on and so forth. So. That is the new uh, editor that we're going to be using in WordPress moving forward. And the classic editor is going to, uh, the lifetime support will stop in 2021. So what that means is in the future, how people are going to be making money with WordPress is, if you run a blog, you will need a blog, or you write your blog in Gutenberg. 
okay? If you develop websites, those websites have to have Gutenberg in them. If you develop things, your things have to be Gutenberg ready. If you develop plugins, they have to be Gutenberg ready. And if you work for a WordPress agency, you will have to use Gutenberg. WordPress currently uh, is used by 32% of the web. Now just imagine, after 2021 or even after this year, this is the market you have. If you Gutenberg ready, you have plugins that are Gutenberg ready, this is the market you have. So you have 32% of the web all needing Gutenberg ready sites, themes, and plugins. Now that you could be convinced that you really need to build something around Gutenberg, you might be wondering, where do I get the inspiration? What should I build with Gutenberg? Well, for starters, like many other uh, products, you, want, you might want to start with your own niche. If you're using WordPress and feel like you're missing a particular functionality in Gutenberg, you might want to address that. Um, so scratch your own itch. You will find that many other people out there need that particular product that you build. Then uh, follow the trend. Look at the web. Uh, see what uh, websites are using uh, in that particular time. For example, a few years ago, uh, Facebook uh, started using the cover image. Twitter started using the cover image. Google Plus started using the cover image. And all of a sudden now, when you visit websites, you will see that most blog posts have something called the hero image. Okay? Now, if you notice that, well, this is a trend, and it makes websites look very good, I want it on my site, but it doesn't exist, say, in Gutenberg. You create a blog for the cover image. Okay? So, though currently you might not want to create the cover image blog because it already exists in Gutenberg, but when you follow the trends, uh, you will be able to get good new ideas that you can implement uh, in Gutenberg. Then uh, you might also want to look at the top selling plugins on the market currently that do not support Gutenberg yet. At least those you're sure there's a market for them. Yeah? There's already a market, people have already bought those plugins, but they are not yet Gutenberg ready. So you might want to get such a plugin, uh, convert it into Gutenberg, and put it up uh, on the market. So uh, we, we've been We've seen the market, the market is going to be uh, ready. You've seen that you will want to develop these plugins based on the inspiration you've got. Now you might be wondering how then do I develop these plugins? Uh, for non-developers, please hire a developer for this task. There are very many developers in here who would be happy to help you uh, to develop a blog. As long as you have a good idea, they'll be happy to develop uh, the blog for you. Then for the developers, you're going to have to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and React. Um, you might also want to review the WordPress plugin development handbook. It's free of charge. It's on .org. It's on .org. Uh, you also want to review the WordPress Gutenberg Development Handbook. It's also on .org. All these are free resources. It's documentation written by WordPress. Once you visit uh, the .org site, you'll be able to review it. Uh, then you want to review the WordPress coding standards. Those are basically, they help you uh, work with best practices on how to develop plugins using either PHP for the PHP developers as well as JavaScript uh, for the JavaScript developers. Then after you've learned all this, you want to use um, the Create Guten Blog boilerplate. Okay? We all know what a boilerplate is. Basically, um, it's already made functionality. It's more like a frame. Once you've learned these technologies and use that framework, you'll be able to uh, develop a blog in less than a day. Okay? So I'll share this, these resources, I'll share this uh, PowerPoint later on so that you can be able to uh, follow through for those who are not following at the moment. Then um, when I was 
preparing this talk, I had prepared a practical session, but I've been given only 30 minutes, which the practical session will take about 15 minutes of developing a, a blog. So we shall put this later for those who want to develop a blog. You will approach me later and we develop it together. But basically, what you need to have is uh, a machine that is ready to run PHP 7 code. Uh, you need to have a WordPress installation that has uh, the Gutenberg plugin enabled. You need to have uh, Node.js on your machine, NPM. Uh, you also need to have a modern browser like Chrome. Then, um, after we built our block, you would need to put it on the market. Uh, the way you market your plugins changes all the time. You might want, at the point that you've developed your uh, plugin that is ready, you might want to use Google. Uh, look at the newest ways that you can market uh, your product then. Google will give you, uh, there are very many developers who are always writing about uh, how to market these products online. Then uh, you also want to use uh, the freemium model. The freemium model basically is you create your plugin that has 10 features, and then you strip it down to three features to make the light product. So you put the free, there are three features on, say, a free market, or you give it out for free, and then the, the one that has 10 features is put on the market. So if someone downloads the free version and they really like uh, the features, they can always buy the, the one with more features, the premium version. Then uh, you really want to write very good documentation for your products. Uh, this goes a long way. Uh, once you've developed your plugin, make sure you write very good documentation for it uh, on your site or on the market that you have put it. Um, this shows if you really take good care of your uh, documentation, it shows the users that you also took very good care of the product. And most users, when they are buying a product, they will first have to read about it, see how it works and also see how easy it is to use and probably download it or buy it at that point. Then uh, you need to carefully choose a market. Uh, there are very many markets out there where you can put this product. Uh, one of them is Envato, uh, Code Canyon in particular for the plugins. But uh, they have different rates. Yeah, you, you sell your products uh, different amounts and they tax differently. So you might want to really dig into these uh, markets and learn how they work uh, before committing to putting your products on them. Then after you put your product on the market, you want to advertise. Yeah, you, after you put your product on the market, you want to advertise. You go uh, into uh, forums like this one, uh, talk about your product, share your experience. Also, you, there are very many uh, groups on Facebook, uh, WordPress groups on Facebook. You can go to them and uh, talk about your products. There are very many other forums like Quora and Reddit. You need to be careful with Reddit though. Uh, they, they are very sensitive with uh, spamming. So you want to first provide value before you slide in your links. Um, A recap of what we've talked about, we're talking about how to make money by creating Gutenberg blocks for sale. Basically, you need to analyze the market, learn uh, what is working and what will work in the future. Then you want to uh, get a very good inspiration, uh, make sure it's a good idea you're developing, uh, develop your shiny product. Once you're very sure you've tested it with your friends and they really like it, you want to put it on the market. Uh, be careful when you're choosing the market. Uh, very many markets out there take almost 50% of what you'll be taking. And that has add tax on top of that. So you need to be very careful when you're choosing a market. Um, after choosing the market, do advertise. Uh, do advertise in different WordPress forums, uh, different um, online marketing platforms. Then um, be sure to provide very good support. <coughs> Once uh, clients have bro uh, bought your product, you want to provide very good support because this will be your referrals uh, for the next client. Then you want to optimize your process. Um, when you put up uh, your product on the market, you want to put analytics into these landing pages 
so that uh, you're able to measure uh, which buttons, uh, which uh, sections of that page people are, are mostly interested in, uh, which videos are they watching on that particular page. That, that data will help you to optimize your process and put uh, call to actions in specific positions that will get these people to buy your product. It will take some time, but also uh, during the inspiration, I talked about uh, working on your own problem. Uh, scratching your own itch. If you have the itch, definitely someone else will have the itch. Among other things, like um, uh, studying the landscape, uh, studying uh, the, the web trends, and also looking at the market. Yeah? Currently, there are very many uh, top selling plugins on the market, but do not support Bluetooth market. So when you see a plugin that is making upwards of uh, 63 billion, and does not support Bluetooth uh, market, you definitely know that one has market. Uh, one trick I've learned is it's based on the time I've spent producing this product. So most of the plugins I've developed, I base it on the, on the MVP, on the minivan vibe product. At what point did I produce my first, uh, my first prototype? This usually takes me within a week or two to develop my first prototype that I can test on my machine and give uh, a friend or two. So if it takes me more than two weeks, then it will go upwards of uh, $20. So if it takes a week to develop my prototype, that means it doesn't have all the features, but at least I can test the core feature that I needed that plugin to do. So that would, uh, it would cost upwards of $15. But if it goes uh, to four weeks, that will go up to $20. But also, that's, that's because of the kind of market that I sell my products on. I sell on uh, Code Canon. So most of their products uh, range upwards of uh, $20 to $60, at least the, the, the particular plugin that, uh, plugins that I develop. But uh, based on the market that you want to put your products on, you might also want to do, uh, you, you want to learn what plugins in your realm are being priced at. So if you're building a slider, you want to know how much a slider is being sold on this market and what features do they have. So if you find that there are sliders in there that have almost similar features as you, you might want to stay in the same price range. Or you might want to use psychology and go up, like Apple, but, well, it depends. It's, it's a lot of experimentation here and there, but um, those are the few tips that I have for you in regards to pricing. For example, I have my e-commerce company that there are some features I want to use eh, with one place when they are nowhere to be found all the plugins like like it's like that. Like for example I'm a developer but I don't go because of time so I normally buy plugins which suit and I get them somewhere. So like you can you develop for me a specific plugin for uh, specifications and uh, what's their favorite for both of us, I'll be happy to do a good plan.